everybody, this is Bill and we're going to be talking about careers in psychology. And the topics that I'm going to cover in the next few minutes are jobs for BAs, uh, getting into graduate school, uh, and uh, you know what you can do to prepare for that. And finally I'm going to wrap up making a pitch for thinking about IO psychology as a career choice. So let's talk about jobs for BAs in psychology. Uh, most of our graduates with BAs who get jobs in the field end up working in human and social services. And the first uh, example that I list there, case manager, that is probably the most common thing that we see. Uh, somebody who's working in social services and doing case management. Uh, it's not really applying that much of your psychology major. Uh, but then again, it is within the field and you are doing something psychological. Other uh, types of careers that we see, uh, a career counselor is another option. And if you're lucky enough to find a job that will uh, give you a little bit of training, a rehabilitation specialist or psychiatric technician. Uh, however, uh, you've got to remember that in general, uh, you don't really find jobs uh, in your field with just a BA. Uh, the Bureau of Labor, Labor Statistics estimates that less than 25 percent of BAs find work related to psychology. Or in general, less than a quarter of college graduates find work in their major or in something related to their major. Uh, what do they find work in? Uh, mid and entry level management and administration, that is case management, sales and marketing. And true to the trend, we see a lot of our graduates from psychology uh, you know, uh, entering those uh, fields. So what can you do now if you are hoping to get a job uh, right after you graduate from York in psychology? Uh, you should check out our field work classes. These are 290, 291, 2345. And what this does is that you sign up for as many credits as hours per week you want to work at a field placement. And uh, then what you do is you go and you know, work at the field placement site. And uh, at the end of the semester, you write a short paper about your experiences. Uh, to sign up for this, uh, you need to uh, talk to uh, Dr. Davies, who I believe is our current uh, uh, field work supervisor uh, when you're uh, signing up for classes during advisement. And the idea being is that you can get a field placement job in a psychological site and then when you uh, graduate and you start to look for a job in psychology you have a network in that area. And networking is very important when you're looking for a job, especially uh, your first job. So this would be probably one of the best pieces of advice I can give you if you want to take your BA once you graduate and work some uh, place in psychology. So please think about this and check this out and talk to our coordinator who I believe right now is Dr. Davies. However, uh, if you really want to have a job in psychology that would require graduate training. So. What type of graduate training are we talking about? Uh, master's degree. Master's degrees are usually about two years. And uh, you know, jobs that you can get or degrees that you can get and careers you can have with a master's degree in psychology. Industrial organizational psychology uh, is a popular one. Also mental health therapist. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about IO psychology later. Uh, but mental health therapist, you'd be uh, trained as a counselor, and you'd be working in a counsel uh, a counseling set a session setting. Excuse me, I'm about ready to cough. There, that's better. Uh, then longer degrees, you can get a PsyD, which is a uh, a doctor of psychology degree. This is about a three to four year degree, and it's a degree that will enable you enable you to become a clinical psychologist, uh, but you don't have to do the research component that you would do in a PhD. Uh, and uh, you know, 
once you graduate, you will be doctor and uh, you will be a clinical psychologist. Uh, then also, you could go for your PhD, which is a four year plus degree. It took me five years to get my PhD. Other people took longer. And depending upon what you specialize in, you could become a clinical psychologist, you could become a psychology professor, or you could become a psychological researcher. Uh, and uh, finally, there's psychiatrist, which is a medical specialty. So if you are interested in becoming a psychiatrist, then you need to go to medical school, which I'm not even going to talk about. So what do you need to do to get into graduate school? What do you need to do right now? Uh, your GPA. Uh, this upsets a great many students, uh, and I don't know where they're receiving this misinformation. But students uh, believe that as long as they have above a, a 3.0 GPA, they can get into graduate school, and this is incorrect. Uh, a 3.0 is the bare minimum GPA that you need to have for graduate school to look at your application. But a GPA between 3 and 3.5 is not a competitive GPA to get into graduate school. Uh, I have a student uh, with a great deal of research experience who has a 3.7 GPA. Uh, and he applied to several graduate programs and didn't get, did not get accepted to any. And that's a very common uh, situation. So uh, if you have a 3.0 or a 3.05 or a 3.25 and you're interested in going to graduate school, uh, you may need to raise that GPA or rethink it. Uh, you need to have a GPA above 3.5 to be competitive. Uh, and really above 3.75 to be act really competitive. And it's very difficult to raise your GPA. Uh, I have a link here to a GPA calculator which will show you how many semesters it would take of getting A's uh, to raise your 3.0 to a, a 3.75. Another thing you need to think about in terms of getting into graduate school is your GRE, the Graduate Record Exam. This is just like the SAT, but for graduate school. And this requires a great deal of study. Students uh, study for it. Some you know, sign up and pay for classes uh, to prepare. And uh, here's a link to the GRE site so you can look at more information. And the other thing that you'll need to get into graduate school are letters of recommendation. Uh, you need uh, three letters from professors. And uh, uh, you know, first off, let me say that you do need it from your professor. Students will say, well, you know, I want to get a letter from my pastor. No, uh, don't do that. That will just be a waste. It will basically invalidate your whole application. It has to be from professors. Professors that have the best situation would be research experience with you. Uh, and I'll talk a, a little bit about that in a minute or so. And also, try to avoid adjuncts. I know that half of our classes, over half of our classes, are taught by adjuncts. So that's going to be hard to do that. But uh, in the scheme of things at research programs where graduate schools are, adjuncts are not considered valuable resources or valuable recommenders. So that would just be a red flag. So avoid the red flags. Get letters from professors who have experience with you for more than one semester. I know this will be difficult. Uh, but again, start to think about, well, how do I plan things so that will be possible? Uh, and here's a pet peeve of mine with letters of recommendation. Uh, well, it's a pet peeve because nobody's told students about this. but. If you uh, have a paper uh, letter of recommendation form, uh, you have to fill it out and sign it first before you give it to me. And so many students will give me a uh, you know paper form which they haven't signed or filled out. And so I have to give it right back to them. This one student, she was in the Caribbean someplace, and she worked out this system where she'd get the forms to her mother who lived in Brooklyn, and she would drive out and leave them in my mailbox and when I did when I got them there was they were not filled out 
So we had to work out how to get them back to the Caribbean and then get, get them back to me before the deadline. Uh, so really make sure that you read what you're uh, looking at. Also, uh, all the letter of recommendation forms, even those online, will ask you a choice. Do you waive the right to look at your letters or do you not wish to waive this right? And what you need to do is you need to waive the right, uh, which says that you're not going to want to look at my letter for you. Why is that? Because if you, uh, you know, uh, don't waive the right, that's going to be a red flag. What, this person doesn't trust their professor? Well, that's funny. Uh, why did they ask them for a letter of recommendation? This is very odd. So don't do that. OK, finally, uh, getting into graduate school, uh, think about other skills and experiences. Uh, top on that list is Psychi. That's the International Psychology Honorary Society. Uh, every March, we take applications for it. Uh, you need to have something like a, a, a 3.25 GPA uh, in general and a 3.0 in psych. And that's pretty much the requirement. So next March, keep your ears open for when we announce that. And uh, it's like 35 bucks, I think, and then that's it, and you're in. You have a really odd ceremony where we stand in the dark with candles with your professors. And that's all you have to do, but it looks really nice when you apply to graduate school. Uh, and I think probably the most important experience that you can have to apply to graduate school is research experience with a professor. And we're talking about the 490 courses, which are the research independent studies. Most of the professors in our department uh, work with students in, the, uh, uh, in independent research. And so the professor that you like the most, you know, the full-time professor that you like the most, or you're interested in their research, uh, contact them and ask them uh, you know, if they want to do an independent study with you. Uh, you know, a couple rules about independent studies. If you approach me, I'm going to look carefully at how good a student you are uh, because working in an independent study, if I have a student who really is not that good, it's just going to take up a lot of my time and I'm, I'm not going to be interested. So this is really actually an honor that we bestow on our better students. Uh, and also, you need to arrange this like a class, so it's best if you contact a professor before, uh, before advisement for the semester that you want to uh, uh, do the independent research. So for example, if you want to do re independent research with me for next fall, you need to contact me before advisement occurs in April. And so, uh, let's talk about the timeline timeline that you need to think about uh, in terms of getting into grad school. Uh, before junior year, contact a professor about research experience in that area, uh, independent study. Junior year, fall, uh, decide what area of psychology you want to specialize in. Uh, take courses critical to your area. Start to look up grad programs. The internet's a good source, but we also have in the psych office uh, the catalog of APA clinical programs. So that would help you a great deal. Uh, your junior year in the spring, draft your biographical sketch. Uh, graduate schools will ask for a biographical essay or something like that. Uh, so draft it, have a professor look at it. Uh, study for your GREs and ask three professors to write letters of recommendation for you and develop a list of potential grad programs to apply to. Uh, senior year, fall, you take your GREs then and you apply to graduate schools. Uh, and then uh, in the spring, like in February, you start to hear back about whether you've been accepted or not. And then you begin grad school. And I'd like to talk about my research uh, to uh, interest you uh, in doing an independent study with me. Uh, my main area of research is in experimental social psychology, and I look at attributions of blame in accidents and sexual assault. And 
if you are interested in doing research with me, I'd like to ask you to commit to two semesters. The reason why is I need to train you to be my research assistant, and that takes about a half semester. So I need to have some time when you can actually uh, you know, work for me. Uh, and here's some students who worked with me. On the left is Cherry Sudantano. She uh, worked with me for four semesters. And here is uh, Cherry in front of a poster that she presented. She wrote the poster. It was based on our research together. And she presented the poster at a couple different undergraduate poster, conference, uh, poster sessions at conferences. Uh, Liz Tang and I are on the right. And Liz worked with me for, again, I think about maybe three or four semesters. And uh, we're in front of the poster that she wrote and presented based on our research. And she presented it not at just undergraduate conferences, but also at the Eastern Psychological Association's uh, conference, which I'm very proud of. And it's a great honor for her to do so. Uh, my other research areas. I'm interested in media fandoms. I'm looking at political beliefs and uh, the content of the fandoms. I'm looking right now at the Big Lebowski Achievers and the Star Trek Trekkies and whether or not the fandoms, that is what, the, what they're interested in, is related to their real-life political beliefs. I'm also kind of interested in the psychology of cosplay. Uh, if you are really interested in that, then you should talk to me about that, and uh, you know I can supervise you on being a little bit more independent than a normal independent study. And in some cases, I do actually have student-driven research. Uh, a few years ago, Nadia Aziz and Reno Rathley, uh, they approached me after uh, Nadia wrote a paper in Social Psych, uh, a research proposal for looking at group guilt in Muslim Americans, and uh, they, uh, you know, we did this, uh, you know, the pilot study together before they graduated. So there's, uh, you know, the opportunity to uh, uh, do, uh, you know, research that you're interested in in an independent study. Uh, there's uh, Reno on the uh, left there. Uh, she was our valedictorian one year, and she came back to be our, uh, you know. Uh, you know, Dean's List uh, alumni speaker. And on the right, uh, right, right is uh, Nadia. And then I have some other research in IO psychology. I, I look at social presence in online class discussions. And I need to have pairs of students working with me. And here are the pairs of students uh, that uh, did research with me last semester and presented their research work at a couple different undergraduate conferences. And I do other IO psych research. Uh, Arlene Best here was our 2008 valedictorian. And uh, she did her honors thesis with me on advertising wear out. You may remember that term from our research methods uh, primer at the beginning of the semester. Uh, and also, uh, one thing I have been doing lately, which students are, you know, uh, which is very popular among students, is Wikipedia editing. And uh, specifically, we're editing IO psychology articles and creating IO psych psychology articles on Wikipedia. I actually have four students uh, this spring uh, working with me on that project. And that's something that you can do in one semester. So finally, I'd like to talk about uh, and try to interest you in becoming an IO psychologist. Uh, so first off, let's talk about money. Uh, it's a little uh, crude to do that, but let's do that to begin with. Uh, if you look at ONET, the median salary of an IO psychologist with an MA is $87,000 per year. And this has a much higher than average growth rate of 20% or more. Well, let's compare that to what psychology majors are all interested in, which is clinical psychology. Well, an MA degree is two years. A PhD degree to become a clinical psychologist is five to eight years. And the national median is only $66,000. So uh, IO psychologists with just two years of graduate school get paid more than clinical psychologists with five to eight years of graduate school. 
uh, mental health counselors the same amount of training two years, uh, but their average pay in uh, New York is only $32,000 per year. So IO psychology has the greater rate of return, if you want to call it that. But there's also the pro-social issue of ethics and IO psychology. Uh, as I've talked about in IO psychology classes, uh, work and a job provide you a person with many psychological benefits. Uh, personal satisfaction, fulfillment, a sense of accomplishment, emotional security, identity, self-esteem, uh, friendship, and belonging. Uh, but these things only accrue if you are matched to the right job. And the main job of an IO psychologist is to match people to the job that meets their uh, knowledge, skills, and ability. Uh, so, you know, if you think about being a psychologist to help people, an IO psychologist can really, truly help people uh, and help a great deal of people. So there is a lot to say about the pro-social ethics of being an IO psychologist. You are going to have the opportunity to truly help people. And that's it for the uh, slideshow today. Uh, I hope this has helped you out. And here is actually the poster from my uh, independent study Wikipedia students uh, that they're presenting at uh, poster day or research day at York this spring. So uh, you know, hopefully this has helped you out. Bye-bye.